Imagine you just got your first real job that isn't babysitting your cousin for free. And with a real job comes a real paycheck. You could use that check to buy an awesome penguin mug or, or maybe get a nice haircut or be a good cousin and buy your baby cousin a new toy. Point is, there's lots of things you could do, but maybe the best option is the one you expect to bring the most value to your life. In probability, we can make this type of thinking more precise. When we're making decisions and interpreting uncertain events, Probabilities are helpful, but mostly we just want to know what we should expect to happen. In this episode, we'll see how with enough information, we can actually quantify our expectations about certain events, which will hopefully ease any of our lingering uncertainty about the outcome of a situation and help us make better, more valuable decisions. I'm Jason Guglielmo, and this is Study Hall Real World College Math. Life is rarely super simple, so in the last episode we talked more about finding the probability of multiple things happening. Specifically, we found the probability of two things happening that don't affect each other, or independent events, and the probability of two things happening that are affected by each other, or dependent events. But just knowing how likely something is doesn't really help us make a decision when we're uncertain. Like for a gift card raffle, we might know there's a 30% chance we win $40, and 20% chance we win $100, and a 50% chance we win nothing. But on average, what should we really be expecting to win? As usual, mathematics has our back with a measure called expected value, which uses probability to weigh the possible outcomes and decide what we should expect to happen. In particular, it tells us what to expect in the long run. This often means thinking about what would happen if we played a game over and over hundreds of times, or imagining a scenario happening in lots and lots of parallel universes and taking an average across all those events. Let's get back to the year 2012 and meet Shay, an aspiring entrepreneur looking to fund her dream Shea Butter business that she wants to call, you guessed it, Shay's Butter. While exploring funding options, Shay stumbled into a finance chat room where people are talking about this digital coin that's supposed to revolutionize how we see money. In a few years, everyone will be clamoring for a piece of this action. So if you buy some right now, you'll be able to sell it later for a huge profit and fund your dreams. On one hand, this does sound like a sneaky get rich quick scheme and anyone would be uncertain whether it's worth it. But at the same time, the coin does only cost $20. To decide, Shay tries to work out her expectations. Not being super familiar with invisible internet money, let's assume there's a 50-50 chance the digital coin actually increases in value in the next couple of years, or ends up being worth nothing. And for the purpose of this example, let's just say she can't lose more than what she invested. So the most she can lose if the coin decreases in value is $20. The value also can't stay at exactly $20 because of economics. For example, if the coin rises in value to $40 and Shay sells her coin at that very moment, then she will earn 20 extra dollars. And in the worst case scenario, if the value of the coin drops to zero, then she will lose her initial $20 investment. In this scenario, there's a 50% chance Shay could gain $20. So if half the time she expects to gain $20, on average, she gets $10. Now, that on average part is key here, and it can be kind of mind-bending to think about. We have to imagine the situation is playing out over and over and over, kind of like infinite parallel universes. And in half of them, Shay wins $20. So her average gain per coin is $10. But on the other hand, there's a 50% chance that she could lose that $20. So if half the time she expects to lose her money, then on average, she should lose $10. Then if her average gain is $10 and her average loss is $10, that balances out to an average net gain of $0 per coin. And that's not tempting enough for Shay to buy in. But maybe instead there's a 50% chance the value of the coin rises to $100. Then that means Shay could earn $80 in profit she could use to file business licenses and other businessy things. Working through the same calculations as before, if there's a 50% chance that she could gain $80 in value, then on average she should gain $40. And if there's still a 50% chance she could lose her $20, then on average she should lose $10. That means on average she could expect a net gain of $30. And hey, that's way better than expecting to get $0 on average, but Shay might still be on the fence. But let's say right when Shay was about to leave the chat room and snap back into reality, she saw a post from CoinGuru22 predicting that by the year 2022, the coin may be worth nearly $30,000. If we calculate the same averages again, Shay would expect to gain $15,000 on average, 
and would still only expect to lose $10 on average. So now Shay is going to buy in, because in the long run, she expects to earn $14,990 per coin. She's willing to take a risk for such a big gain. By weighting each outcome based on its probability and thinking through what might happen over time, we basically calculated a fancy mean, or average, to figure out what to expect. And really, that's pretty much what expected value is, a weighted average. Formally, we'd say that for any situation that has events E1, E2, E3, all the way to EN, with the associated probabilities of P1, P2, P3, all the way through PN, then the expected value of the entire situation is equal to E1 times P1, plus E2 times P2, plus E3 times P3, and so on, until EN times PN. That looks fancy, but just remember, to find our expected value, we multiply the value of each outcome by its probability of happening and add everything up. Let's consider something a little simpler to see this formula in action. Take a single six-sided die. Say we'll win $10 if we roll a one or two, we'll win $30 if we roll a three, and we'd lose $10 if we roll a four, five, or six. Those are the three events. Event A is rolling the one or two, event B is rolling the three, and event C is rolling the four, five, or six. Now we figure out the probabilities. Out of six possible options on a single six-sided die, there are only two ways to roll a one or two. So the probability of event A is two-sixths, or one-third. There's one way to roll a three, so the probability of rolling event B is one-sixth. Then there's three ways to roll a four, five, or six, so the probability of rolling event C is three-sixths, or one-half. Using the expected value formula, we can expect to earn, on average, $3.33. Now, that's not how much we're literally winning on any roll, because we said we could win $10 or 30 or lose 10 each time we play. Instead, the expected value tells us that if we roll the die over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, Eventually, our wins and losses would average out to us getting $3.33 per game. But expected value isn't just about taking a risk. It can also be used to help make calculated, well-informed decisions. Back with Shay and fast forwarding to 2022, Shay successfully launched her business Shay's Butter, a high quality body butter skincare line using her digital coin investment. Last year, Shay's Butter sold 1,500 total units but now she's uncertain how she's going to keep up with inventory to keep up this momentum. Fortunately, the accountant at Shea's Butter, which is just Shea, figured out that they could use historical sales data to find the probability each product is sold. To be prepared for the best possible outcome, Shea wants to sell 8,000 total units next year. So, accountant Shea checks their financial records to see what happened last year. Shea was selling her products one after the other, over and over and over again for a total of 1,500 times. So we could think of these 1,500 times as the long run. And each of these 1,500 sales was one of four options. Lavender butter, Shea oil, unscented butter, and whipped butter. But now we're talking about when Shea makes a sale over and over and over again for a hypothetical 8,000 times. Since lavender butter made up 54% of her sales the year before, Shea expects that to make 8,000 sales, 4,320 of those will have to be lavender butter. And we can do the same thing for the other products too. In this case, we're looking at the expected value formula a little differently. As we saw in earlier examples, when we were doing a bunch of related things like rolling dice, we were trying to figure out what we should expect to happen after we did those things a bunch of times. But for Shay's inventory, we already know what we expect to happen selling 8,000 units of her inventory. So in a sense, we're working backwards with the expected value formula, because now we want to know how likely each product is to sell, and how many units of each she should expect to sell out of the total 8,000. And that likeliness is being determined based on past data on how much of each butter or oil she sold the year before. Overall, being uncertain can be uncomfortable, but using probabilities, averages, and expected value helps us make decisions. When we're able to set our expectations, we can make choices with more confidence and make sense of the world around us much more easily than if we just know the likelihood of seemingly random things happening. Expected value is certainly a powerful tool, especially when dealing with probabilities and data, but it's just one of many tools we can use to make sense of the world and data around us. Sometimes we need to paint a more detailed picture, and that's what we will look at next time. Thanks for watching Study Hall Real World College Math, which is produced by Arizona State University and the Crash Course team at Complexly. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. You can learn more about ASU and the videos produced by Crash Course in the links in the description. See you next time.